The Grim Tale of Grace Macabre, Chapter 44 Grace stood on the patio looking through the multiplaned glass door into the study. Ari stumbled through the room hiding his face and crashed through the door to the small bathroom located across the hall. She was afraid for him, wanted to chase after him and help him make sure he was okay. However, he had made it clear that he didn't need her help. Her phone vibrated. She looked over at the table where it lay with the intention to ignore it, but felt a strange need to answer despite her worry for Ari. She snatched it from the table. It was her mother. Oh no, she thought. Holding the phone to her ear, hoping that her mother had not gone by the house and therefore knew that she had spent the night out, she said, Hello? Good morning, Jennifer replied. How did you sleep last night? I slept great, Grace said, relieved at her mother's tone. It seemed clear she did not know that Grace had lied. She glanced back at the house, hoping to see that Ari was returning. He was nowhere in sight. I'm calling to see how you feel and... To let you know, I just spoke with Ian's mother. She says that Ian is doing much better, Jennifer said. Grace felt a pang of guilt. She had forgotten all about Ian and what he was going through. Is he still in the ICU? They moved him to a private room yesterday morning, Jennifer said. His mom says he wants to see you. People are saying he's a hero, Grace. Did you know that? Grace knew that what he had done was heroic, and not just to save the other kids. He had placed himself in danger primarily to protect her from harm, and her guilt at not going to see him grew. I know that what he did was very brave, Mom, she replied. Apparently, some of the other kids have been telling their stories about what happened, Grace. One girl even captured it on video. There's no telling how many people Ian saved from being killed. Grace replayed the horrible scene in her mind. As worried as she was about Ari, she knew she had to go see Ian. I do suppose he is a hero, she said. A national news agency asked to interview him, Jennifer replied. His parents initially declined the interview, but Ian was adamant to get a chance to speak about what happened. Do you know what he's going to tell the reporter at the interview? No, Grace said, sure that Ian would say something self-deprecating and funny. He's going to tell the reporter that he did it for two reasons. He will say he did it for honor and for the love of a woman. Can you believe he would say something like that, Grace? What do you mean? Grace asked, not understanding why her mother would find this unusual. Well, nobody openly admits to believing in honor nowadays, Grace, and I'd bet that woman is you. Though she did not feel a romantic love for Ian, she did care deeply for him. She couldn't stop a smile as she considered his optimistic view of life. She realized for the first time that while Ian and Ari were both vocal about their philosophical ideas on life, those philosophies were diametrically opposed to each other. Before she could consider these differences, her mother said, Will you go by and see him this morning? I promise, Grace said. Also, Mom, it's Halloween, and I've been, I've been invited by some girls at school to hang out with them. Since you see that I'm safe and in, I'm in a better place, I'd like to go. Can I? Please? Jennifer sighed. Okay, I'll allow it. Please be careful, though. I will, Mom. I promise. 
This time, the lie didn't even cause a hint of guilt. Jennifer gave her the contact info for Ian's mother, and Grace promised to call and set up a time to go see him. They said their goodbyes and hung up. Is everything okay? Ari said behind her. Grace turned to face him, and he took her in his arms. I'm sorry for running off like that, he said. I was in a lot of pain, and it must have been a wasp that stung me. I almost didn't make it to get my epinephrine pen. Everything's fine here, Grace said, noticing that he did look pale. She loved the way it felt being in his arms. Ian is out of ICU and has asked to see me. Are you going to see him? Well, I promised my mom I would. Besides, I feel a little guilty that I haven't seen him since the day he got shot. A flash of disappointment swept over Ari's face. Why guilty? Well, Grace said, taken aback a little by Ari's question. He did put himself in front of me to protect me from being shot by Justin. Ari considered this for a moment. That may be true, but you stopped his bleeding. You helped save his life in return, and your obligation to him is done. Ari's reply touched Grace on two levels. On the first, it rang true because her debt was paid. She had saved Ian's life after he saved hers. However, on a deeper level... She knew that Ian's choice to save her and the others was an act of self-sacrifice. He chose to put himself in harm's way simply because he cared about those around him, even those who didn't like him. And this resonated with her in the same way as the vibrations from the ancient tree and the humming of the strawberry dragonflies had. Ari read the internal conflict on her face. In a gentle tone, he said, Please, don't misunderstand me. I only meant that sometimes people in your situation will feel obligated to become more than just a grateful person. How so? Grace asked. Well, I've seen people feel so thankful for being saved that they misunderstand those feelings as love. So you're afraid that I might fall in love with Ian because he saved my life? Grace asked. Ari looked a little sheepish. Well, maybe a little, he said. Look, I'm letting down my guard with you, Grace. I'm trying to show you who I really am. But along with that comes a degree of vulnerability. I'm thankful for what Ian did, but I'm afraid of losing you. Grace reached out and took Ari's face in her hands. She boldly pulled him close and kissed him. I love you, Ari. He took his hands and placed them on each side of her neck. The warmth of his touch radiated down into her core. I love you too, he said, and gave her a long, soulful kiss. When they broke from the kiss, she was quivering, inebriated with desire. She had just told him for the first time that she loved him. He had accepted her confession of love and had replied with his own confession. He pulled her close, hugging her tight. After a moment, he pulled back. I trust you, Grace. I say you get yourself ready and go see what Ian needs. Thank you, Ari, for trusting me. Ari shrugged. I have no other choice considering how I feel about you. Look, I've got to meet up with the others anyway. After you're done with Ian, come to the club. What's happening there? She replied. It's Halloween, he said. 
our favorite night, and we have planned something special to welcome you into the family. It's going to be a double celebration. He kissed her on the cheek and walked back into the house. After he stepped into the study and closed the door behind him, she called Ian's mother. Hello, Mrs. Black. This is Grace. Oh, please call me Mary. I appreciate you calling me Grace. Ian has been asking to see you, and I think it would just lift his spirits. Well, I'd love to come see him, Grace replied, the guilt creeping up inside her again. She decided to tell another tiny lie. I've tried to stay away until he was feeling better. What would be a good time? Oh, any time, Mary replied. He's awake and he's doing so well. Well, I could be there in about an hour, Grace said. Do you guys need anything that I can bring you? No, dear, Mary replied. There was relief and weariness in her voice. Just having you here for a little while will be enough. It will be an act of agape. I'll see you then. Wait, Grace said a little too loudly in her attempt to stop Mary from hanging up. Sure, honey. What is it? That word you just used, Grace said a little too eagerly. Agape. What does it mean? Oh, it's a wonderful word, Grace. Agape is an ancient Greek word. It means a selfless act of love. (laughs) 